right, folks, I'm back. It's me, Mabu Chavi, a.k.a. The People's Coach, a.k.a. your host and speaker for today. Now, today, I want to talk to you guys about how to command more effectively. Now, from being a coach, a leader, an inspirational role model and motivator, I have learned one of many things. And that one of many things I want to share in today's video. And it's all about commanding. Now, check this out. Play, pay close Attention, listen closely and carefully if you want to lead, if you want to command more effectively, if you want to influence people in a positive way. This is what you need to be doing. First of all, I'll give you an example, a family situation. You are a father or you are, you're just one of the eldest siblings in the family and you're telling one member of the family to do something. For instance... Can you go and clean up your room as a parent to a child? Can you go and clean up your room? It's messy, sort it out. Now, the child is about, say, for instance, 15 years old. Do you think that child would respond well? Do you think that child would listen to you and obey your instructions? Well, in today's society, that's very unlikely to happen. In fact, that you might get a negative response. In fact, that you might get a bit of bad chat. But here's what you need to be doing. Here's what to do. Here's the defining fact. Here's the difference between leading and commanding and being disres disrespected. When you tell someone to do something, you need to do it with them. So, for instance, let's replay that situation, that scenario again. A parent tells their child, that 15 or 16 year old child, to go clean up their room. You would say, son, daughter, let's go tidy up your room. Come, I will help you. Do you see the difference? The second situation sounds more positive because it sounds more like you're trying to help them. You're trying to contribute rather than telling them and dictating them what to do. You're likely to get a negative response if you dictate and tell your sibling or whoever it is that you're trying to tell what to do. You have a negative response because it comes across like an order. It comes across like an authoritative, do as I say. Whilst the other one, whilst the later example, comes across like, hey, very objective. You're trying to help them. You're trying to help each other. You're trying to lessen the burden. And it's all about being clever in terms of commanding. Does that make sense? And you can apply and employ this in so many different aspects and areas of your life, from work, from family, from social gathering. Whatever it is, if you're in a position of responsibility, then th that's the kind of thing that you need to be doing. You need to be contributing. I'll give you an example. Have you ever watched a program called Undercover Boss where... <laughs> Where in many businesses, the boss is just overseeing. He's not really getting involved in the hard hands-on work himself. He's sending out his troops to keep an eye on things, to man and manage things. Whilst him, he just takes a step back, keeps an eye on things, and then just goes off and does whatever he has to do. Which, there's nothing wrong with that to a degree, but sometimes to feel a part of a workforce, you need to get in there. You need to get your hands on experience. You need to get a, a feel and taste of what it's like to work with the people, to be around them. That's how you will know your colleagues, your, your employees. That's how you will know what it feels like to be around people. Because you're blending in, you're mixing in, and the same sort of thing applies in the family. It's all good trying to tell someone what to do and how they should do it, but how about getting yourself involved with that person? That's the thing I'm trying to bring to your attention. It's not about telling people what to do each and every time. There's always a time and a place where someone has to be told what to do and they just go off and do it. Yes, but to be, to command more effectively, you need to get involved yourself with that person. You don't have to do it in every single situation, but maybe here and there, pick your moments, pick when you want to get involved. But make sure you've built up a good reference where you are getting involved with that person. That's the thing. That's the most important thing because that is missing. 
Now check this out. There's a fine line between getting involved and helping and contributing that per- um, with that person than doing the work for them. Because if you end up doing that, if, if you have done this, if you have told that person what to do, for instance, your son, your daughter, or that person, and that person turns around and says, no, I'm not going to do it, and you end up doing it, what are you teaching them? You are teaching them to be neglectful, negligent, lazy, and not take accountability for their actions. So in order to get them to do whatever it is that you're after, you have to do it with them. And then eventually, you've lightened the burden, you've taught them accountability, you've taught them how to contribute, and you've also taught them how to be responsible. So it's up to you how you choose to go about things. You can choose to go about things in a negative way or you can choose to go about things in a positive way. But I'll tell you what, success is built upon contribution. Are you doing your bit? Rather than commanding and telling people what to do and how to do it, you be a part of that team. You you get yourself involved in it. That's what it's about, people. So, I hope that's been insightful. I hope that has served a good reminder to you guys out there. This is all I have to say. Until then, take care, stay strong, stay focused, and always live to learn to inspire or empower and inspire the lives of many as well as yourself. Bye for now.